This is KSC of the Fire and the Kid, episode number 657. Of course, they spoke a little bit about the Crystal Ear situation. And it seems as if, just, just from what I'm thinking, that Brendan's a bit of a liar, right? Let's just play this clip, but I think he's a bit of a liar. I think he's talking out of his bum hole here. But let's see. Let's play the clip and you can judge it for yourself. But I think, from what I remember, this is all lies. But let's see what you guys think. to the group chat right? yeah i sent yeah. to you guys i thought um i thought i thought it was best case scenario i thought he nailed it as far as like an apology yeah. thing and just giving everybody an update and just letting people know like you know he's been getting help which he has i talked to chris every week mm -hmm. he's been getting help and uh just taking the necessary steps to to come back man and i i think it's weird too it's like you know, obviously a year away from work from making a dime off his talents. It's like, how, how much do you want to punish, punish the guy? Mm -hmm. And, and what, and what, uh, what, what charges were pressed? Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting. What charges were pressed? I'm Brian or, or Chris. Yeah. What charges do you have? Yeah. You bring me charges. It was different conversation. Different conversation. But that's a weird justification. Again, I understand, you know, again, he's a friend. I'm a fan of the guy too. It's a weird justification because there's no charges. It means you're innocent. It's from what I have understand of doing my little research is on the Google. It's pretty difficult to convict anybody of, you know, sexual assault. It's a pretty much a he says, he said sort of thing. Um, you know, I'm assuming there's a statute of limitations. I'm assuming there's only so much you can do, um, you know, with certain st in certain states in terms of even filing a report, what that report actually does in the long term. And also, in some occasions too, I would imagine if you're the victim, it's less so about the person being, you know, thrown into solitary confinement and more so about you being able to tell your story, get it off your chest, clear your conscience, put it out there and kind of, you know, make sure everyone's aware of this person and what they did to you in the past. That's probably what it's more so about um, than actually making sure that you kind of, you know, stick this person up. Because we've seen what happens when women are actually empowered to make sure that somebody actually pays the full price of the law of what they've done, right? Harvey Weinstein is a good example. Uh, you know, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, the other dude, uh, Bernie, well, it doesn't matter. You know, the guy I'm talking about, the black comedian. I forgot his name. It's his, his case in my head. Um, Cosby, right? The same thing happened with him too. You could see what happens in those occasions, but they're pretty rare. For all the other situations that you've heard of, of people being accused of assault, whatever it is, what has actually happened to them in the court of law? Not a lot, right? They've had reputational damage, which is probably worse than anything that would happen in the court of law. Obviously, it's not any sort of um it doesn't give any the victims any kind of closure because you're still seeing the person plastered on billboards but usually reputational damage does lead to your agency dropping you you getting taken off a show you know you've seen what's happened with army hammer right he essentially has a bit of a kink and maybe he went a bit over top with some of the, his past relationships he was in but for the most part did he do anything illegal army hammer not really and what's happened to him reputational damage right he's been dropped by his agency he's got taken off of a movie i think he was filming and essentially his career is completely gone right unless he moves to europe and does something he's done in the united states and that's probably far worse than him going to prison because he's unlikely to set and to spend any time in jail um you know for crimes that are pretty hard to prove either way especially stuff that can you know involves you know relationships you know it's just just hard to kind of justify so to say that you know just because he didn't get charged in the court of law it means he's innocent is a horrible defense but again you know what do we expect from einstein here were you talking about rumors and what are we gonna yeah. what are what are we supposed to do? Callan can't what are we come supposed on, to do? Callan can't come on his own show for, for how long? We give him a, basically a year off. A year of discipline. I talk to Callan every single day. Mm -hmm. That's what else is interesting. It's kind of like, he didn't give me you know, with, with that um, CISO hotel thing where all these YouTubers thought, oh, this, this, and this. And the text was like, you guys don't have the facts. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't about. know what you're talking it's about. It's fun to talk about. Yeah. It. Same thing with me and Brian. Oh, Brendan threw Brian under the bus. Brendan kicked Brian off the show. Whoa, you guys have no clue what you're talking no about. No fucking clue. I talked to Brian every single day. We had a plan. You're seeing it come to fruition. Brian was getting compensated every single day for not being here because what happened to him was out of my control, out of his control. Mm -hmm. So we... we there's no book on how to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can see we had a plan. Chris has a plan. We're all, we all have conversations that you guys don't get to see because you're not our friends. 
and it's not for Ooh. the public. <laughs> That's straight up. That's hey, straight up know, right yeah, there. Straight yeah. up. It's not a friend. But again, let's rewrite some facts here. That's not true. We remember what happened. What actually happened, he got accused of what he got accused of. No, let's actually rewind it back a little bit. When Chris Alia got accused of what he got accused of, instead of these guys calling up their friend and discussing it over the phone, you know, p being there to support him and maybe just not talking about him in public because, hey, he's your friend. Why would you want to bury him and talk about something that's just happened raw in the moment in front of camera, in front of, you know, half a million people and maybe more on your podcast? It makes absolutely no sense. They didn't do that. Instead, they went in front of the camera, tried to get a, a really real reaction from it, which kind of led to the iconic, you know, scenes of Brendan crying, the I can't talk thing, stepping away the camera, sobbing, Brian Callan using the time in between his tears to let you know that he wasn't really good friends with Chris and all that mad stuff then when the accusations came out about Callan it seemed like it was a bit of a karmic restitution right that these guys that were trying their best to distance themselves from Callan from Crystalia sorry crying as if they've never seen him be a womanizer in any way shape or form this is out this world oh my god it's so sad so sad crying and then suddenly now they're put in a position where one of his co-hosts his, you know, his co-host and Brian Callan is accused of something far worse right allegedly he's accused of rape uh, you know Chris Lee maybe is accused of being horny and maybe sliding into some dms of girls he probably has no business being in but rape and you know allegedly being a bit of a nonce i know what i would rather have on my docket again don't give me either because i'm a christian but still that's what happened then when that happened could uh, Callum put out a statement i think an instagram thing saying he's going to go on a podcast and address everything everyone was looking forward to the podcast on saturday it was a special thing it didn't happen it did transpire then suddenly the other show doesn't come out um and then and then i think from there they try to do a show then that show gets taken down and then basically what ends up happening is that we find out that they're signed to this company called cast media which is some sort of production or ad buying company wherever it is it's, you know it's got a whole load of podcasts on there everything from impulsive i think used to be on there the portal with eric weinstein is on there loads of stuff right loads of podcasts that are mainly i guess la based are uh, on this thing called cast media and i guess they're the ones that are in charge of the ads because they basically didn't allow brian to come back on the show because it was bad for business because no advertisers want to advertise on the show with brian callan sitting in that hot seat so he went because of that not because of them having a plan or putting things into place it was because of that and obviously because the podcast brings in i'd imagine most of their revenue maybe outside of brendan because he's got a lot of other things that he does but it's a big money earner for both of these guys the sensible thing to do would be to extract yourself from the position and allow it to function and then obviously you still collect a check behind the scenes because you know again why would you cut if you know to spite your face it makes complete sense right they did it and it kind of worked out um obviously for them it's monetarily the show continued the views are you know drastically down compared to what they do usually you can even see in this video where they're talking about it, it's like 130,000 usually uh 130,000 yeah, 130,000 usually it's about half a million quarter of a million with um sometimes the dead ones with Callum but you know the views did completely dip then Callan goes off to do his own podcast, Conspiracy Social Club, with Sam Tripoli, you know, somebody who, you know, some people may be accused of having some sort of substance abuse issues. It doesn't necessarily go as planned. It's not as actually that good. Vimeo is taking it down, da 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 And now we're in a position later on down the line with as times has elapsed and time has gone by, where in my opinion, why things happen, more than likely, because Callan was on the show recently, was that Callan's probably finding it difficult to sell tickets. In, obviously in COVID market it's difficult because even though you know venues are half the capacity people are not people are a little bit gun shy about buying tickets to go places and they probably have a lot of concern about being in places with you know densely packed audiences laughing at comedy they're just a bit worried about going there but in general you know he's struggling to sell tickets so the best place to go and promote yourself is to the fan base that you've cultivated over the last what 10 plus years so they decided to go back in there you know it's it's just what it is but to suggest that it's some sort of grand plan that he had put in place of how we're going to make sure you bounce back and stuff no you didn't right Callum probably approached it the worst way possible he was ranting and raving online all the time um suing the flipping husband of one of the victims because he was essentially um, ruining his chance of going on tour and doing performing in front of stage he then went on all the you know standard you know um right wing i guess platforms to go and try and redeem himself loads of just you know corny stuff that you wouldn't really think would be a great place a great way to kind of get your career back up and going but maybe he's kind of come to the quiet resolution or realization that that stuff is completely over but to suggest that it's some sort of big grand plan and you know our friends is like mm, let's wind your neck in a bit a little bit mate you know what i mean it's not that big of a deal but hey what can you do in it these guys are odd odd human beings 
But yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think um, there was a grand plan? Do you think they knew exactly what they were going to do? Or do you think this is just, you know, a uh, happenstance that kind of fell within their lap? Because again, you know, we're, we're still living in COVID, in COVID times. You know, parts of America are still locked down. People have other things that they're worrying about. Um, other scandals have transpired since that time. You know, it's been a year. People are going to, you know, get this stand-up comedy. How how much can you really get cancelled, you know? Unless you're, you know, Chris Lee and kind of were maybe bad examples because they both had like network TV sort of deal things going on behind the scenes, whatever it may be. But you can ride it out if you're smart enough you know I mean? it's not that difficult to do if lucy k can make a comeback you, those guys can make a comeback do you know what i mean it's not that difficult um but yeah let me know what you're thinking below in the thoughts down below let me know